Hello everyone, welcome back to the Mitchells in Alaska channel. So today, I thought what I would cover is um, what we use for chainsaws. We've had a, had a couple of people asking about, you know, brands and what, see, what they should buy and all that. So I thought I'd just kind of show you a little bit about what we use and, uh, and why, why, why that's what we chose to use. So well, first we'll talk about some of the safety stuff. Um, we have, when we're cutting, we use, use most of the safety gear, the chaps and the helmets and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> so I'll show a couple different kinds of chaps here. This is a steel brand chaps. This here is a, uh, um, the Bonville. It's made in America as well. Both of them are UL listed. Um, you know, these right here are about $180 for the steels. I think these here was about $65 or $70. So quite a bit cheaper. They're both about the same. This one has a pocket on it. Uh, mine don't have a pocket on it, but um, don't usually carry anything in, in them anyway. So, um, so anyway, that's, I highly recommend, uh, especially new people that uh, hasn't even, you know, hasn't cut wood for years. I definitely would recommend wearing chaps. Um, you know, most of the professionals wear them because it is a big safety thing. It's awful easy to trip and stumble um, and get a saw on your leg. It's not very, not very nice. I've got a small cut on mine I did as a teenager, but it was only about an inch long, but I did see one one time that was over seven inches long. And I'm telling you, they are a nasty looking cut. I mean, very nasty looking. So I would highly recommend buying the safety gear. Um, helmets, got a couple different kinds of helmets here. This one is a steel helmet. This one here is not a steel helmet. This is kind of a no name. Um, steel helmets are, I don't even think you could buy one for under a hundred dollars. Um, both of them have adjustable headbands. I wore this one all last summer. Seemed to work fine. The, um, um, the earmuffs and all that seem to be fine. Um, the ones on the steel, you know, maybe it works a little bit easier, but mine were okay too. The shields, both those are about the same. They're both just a mesh shield. Um, some people wonder about um, using those, you know, if you can see through them, but when you first put them on, you know, they may look a little bit dark but you can actually see through them perfectly fine. They're just, you know, something different to get used to, but um, I would definitely recommend the helmets and, um, and earmuffs. Um, I didn't wear the earmuffs so much when it was hot. You probably should, but old as I am, I already lost enough hearing that I can't hear anything anyway. So, um, but I would definitely recommend wearing those as well. And then of course, you know, some good leather gloves. Um, you definitely wear out a lot of gloves cutting wood. So I got, I brought three saws up here. I didn't want to bring up everything we had just cause I didn't want to pack it all in my house and then have to go put it all back up. But I did want to show a, a couple of differences. Um, <clears throat> and it's hard to recommend a saw for somebody when you don't know, you know, anything about them, you know, so, um, you know, a lot of people are going to, you know, going to tell you great big saws and all that, you know, but um, really you got to use, you got to use what you can use. So for a small person, you know, cutting wood for yourself, not for hire, um, the little 180, and it, everything we have is steel saws. So uh, it's kind of like Chevys and Fords, you know, there's a lot of brands out there. Without a doubt, the two main ones are steel and Husqvarna. And we know people and have friends that use Husqvarna's um, and, and we like steel. There's nothing wrong with either one of them. Um, the Husqvarna's are a little bit higher higher speed than the steels are, I think. But the steels have a little more torque, I believe. But, but at any rate, it really only matters what you can get serviced, you know, so, um, you know, 
buy what you got a dealer there for. You know, if you got a Husqvarna dealer that you like, you know, run Husqvarna's. If not, you know, find you a steel dealer and run steel. So, um, either one is, is good saws. And what usually happens to chainsaws is the people using them usually is wind up, you know, is what causes the saws not to run good. So, um, you're in a dirty environment when you fuel them up, so it's easy to get dirt and stuff in the gas tank. And they do have a filter in there that, you know, will help with a lot of that. But, but usually people don't use a saw enough and the carburetor gums up on them and they run bad. And, and then they blame it on the brand of saw and all that. Well, that's generally not the case. It's generally because people left old gas in them and stuff like that. And I'd highly recommend running um, nothing but uh, non-ethanol premium and ideally if you're not gonna if you're not gonna do more than cut wood for yourself I'd recommend buying it just the pre-mixed in the can you know and as much gas as we go through that would be pretty expensive but um, you know I don't know how many gallons of gas we go through but you know I know last winter or yeah last spring and fall I mean we probably went through you know at least four gallons of bar oil um, you know, cutting logs and stuff like that. So, um, but if you don't want to really be trouble free, buy the stuff from the store that's already canned up. And if you do that, you won't ever have trouble with your saw. I can tell you that for sure. Um, but again, you know, size matters. It matters what size of trees you're cutting and it matters what size of person is that's using it. You know, like where we're at here in Alaska, Heck, we don't hardly have much that we cut that's bigger than eight inches in diameter. So you don't really need a great big saw. The ones we use all the time is like these um, 261 steels. These are uh, um, 18 inch bars on all of ours. Um, and we have two of these 261 C's and a 271. So. And the reason I chose these to bring in here, this is our main saws. These are all both uh, 50 cc saws. And um, the 271 is what they classify as a farm saw. And the 261 are a pro saw. So both of them are the same, same category saw. Um, both of them are the same, same size of bars, same chain size. You know, they look almost alike, but there is some major differences in them. So I was going to show the differences here between uh, pro saws and farm saws. And, um, you know, so as an example, this is mine, the 271. I bought that before we came out here. Um, and this is my brother's. He bought it before he came out here. And you know, he's, you know, he's cut wood and been burned wood a lot longer than I had, but, but, um, but anyway, you know, this saw here is about $200 cheaper than this saw. And when you look at them, it's really hard to see the special features that, that, um, make it worth the difference. But, but knowing what I know now, I would definitely have bought a pro saw. And here's some of the differences in them. This saw has a compression release on it, makes it much easier to crank. I have arthritis in my hands pretty bad, so that's why I put the big loop handle on that one. But the uh, compression release makes this one much easier to crank. The Pro Saw um, actually weighs over a pound less than the Farm Saw. Another nice feature of this one is when you get ready to start it, put it on choke and you start it, and then you can set it down and let it set and warm up. The other one, the Farm Saw, you have to put it on choke to start it, and then it'll fire, and you have to take it off choke, and then it'll start. Usually run for a minute and die, and you have to restart it again. Or this one's just sitting there running, idling with it still on the choke. And then whenever you touch the throttle, of course it comes off the choke. And then, um, and that's all you gotta do. It's a, it's a much better setup. Um, this saw here too, whenever you shut the saw off, this switch here always returns back to the on position so you don't have to turn the switch back on before you restart the saw. That's, uh, that's definitely a nice feature, but you know, the, the engines on them are, are actually completely different. Uh, they're actually made in different places. 
Uh, they're made out of different alloys, all of that. So this saw here actually is the same CCs as that one, but it actually does put out a little bit more horsepower and um, um, all that. So, but anyway, that's kind of the difference between a pro saw and a farm saw. They also have a, another line called uh, homeowner saws. Now, the homeowner saws, um, of course, are cheaper yet. And, um, and some of them, again, you know, if you're just cutting wood for yourself, uh, like the little MS-180, and that is a sweet little saw. You can actually get that with uh, wrenchless chain adjustments, all that, which is super nice. You can actually get it with an easy start on it. So you basically just pull the rope without turning over the engine and wind the spring up, and then, and then it just starts, you know, then it'll just kick over and, and start. So really nice for, for smaller people that are really lightweight. These two 50cc saws are about 10 pounds a piece. I think the pro saw is um, is about 10, and I think mine's about 11. You know, that I mean, that weight is without the bar and chain on them. That's the way they're sold. But so anyway, um, enough about the um, the bigger saws. But well, those are that is really a nice size saw to, to be cutting wood. I mean, they're fast and all that. So another one I, that I use a lot is this little one here. This is what they call a, a limbing saw, and um, so these are classified as in tree saws. So these are ones like uh, you know if you had an arborist you know trimming your trees at home, um, a lot of times it's going to be a little saw like this is what they use because you can, being a top handle saw, you can reach out and run this with one hand. So you can't do that with those. So. Um, so these are set up a lot like a pro saw too. It does have a primer button. The switch actually returns to um, returns to run whenever you uh, shut it off and all that. So again, you can see I put a big handle on here because my hands just won't take the the uh, cranking. But but anyway, this is a 30 cc saw. So that's pretty comparable size wise. I think to the about the the 180 um, is probably about a 30 cc saw. So this this saw here. The nice thing about this, this saw is this actually runs the same size as the chain and everything, so we can use the same file as our bigger saws do. Where like the 180 does have a smaller chain that you can actually get the, the, bigger, um, the bigger drive and the bigger bar and the bigger chain and put on a, a 180 if you want, but, um, but that's not standard on them. So, But this is really a nice little saw. I think this saw here is about, I don't remember, six pounds or something like that. But, but I like to use it a lot for, you know, when I'm cutting limbs off because it, those just get heavy for an old guy, you know, by the end of the day. So, um, so, you know, a 30 cc saw is, is big enough to cut wood for yourself. You know, if you're not living, you know, somewhere where you have big trees to cut, you know, if you're just cutting like here, you know, we just mostly cut spruce and I haven't seen a spruce up here. Well, I know they have them, but not in our area. Um, that this little saw won't cut down. And I've cut a lot of firewood with this saw just because I like using it. So, um, so anyway, that kind of covers some saws. Now, we do have a bigger variety of saws than that. And and it's because they all have a place. So we, um, my brother actually has a 194C, which is the same size as that top handle saw of mine, except it's shaped, it's shaped more like a conventional chainsaw like this and this 30 cc he uses that one all the time so again 30 cc's is plenty big enough to cut wood when you're in small trees so um so again it depends on what you're going to do how big a trees you're going to be cutting and if you're just cutting for yourself and and how you, how you are you know physically you know is are you um how strong are you and all that. So, um, and then I guess the next thing I would touch on is, you know, if you're gonna have a chainsaw, you're gonna have to learn to sharpen them. And um, sharpen them with a round file is something I'm not any good at and had never been able to do it very well at all. So, um, so we got started using these and this is a steel uh, sharpener. You buy them to, for the, whatever size the chain that your saw has because it's got the little round files in it. Now this this particular deal here, I actually showed this in a video once before, but you know, having a one direction, you know, 
sharpens your teeth going this way and, and then you turn it around like this and then you go the other way from the other side. So <clears throat> this here actually sharpens the, the tooth and then it has a second file in it here that also touches your drags. So we all, we all use this and, uh, and it's, it's great. It, uh, I heard the term the other day that I really like. A guy said that these do a really good job they won't get to saw grandpa sharp, but but they do plenty good enough. And and um, and what he meant by that is is there's a lot of old guys out there. And when I say old guys, you know, guys that were here ahead of me um, before they had anything like this, and that cut a lot of wood, and they could file a saw with a single round file and make that thing cut like a brand new chain all the time. And it didn't take them very long to do it. So. I've seen them do it on the tailgate of a pickup, you know, with the saw just sitting there and, and uh, cut like a champ, you know, it, it don't work that way for me. So um, I'm not going to have one anchored down, so I usually put mine in a vise out here before I go anywhere, then I'll sharpen it. But if I have to sharpen it when I'm out, um, I really have a hard time trying to do it on the tailgate of the pickup. Now, I make this little deal, which I have. This is actually made to drive into a stump. You just hit it with your splitting hammer that you'll have with you anyway, and sink it into the sink it into a stump to here. Then you can set your saw down and tighten this up on the bar, and that's made to hold it still. The only problem is for us out here is uh, <laughs> all we have is little trees, so we don't really have any stumps big enough to drive this into. You know, there is there is some birch trees and stuff out here, but that's usually not what we're cutting. So anyway. So, but if you're back south where you got big trees, this is really a nice thing to carry with you in your uh, saw pouch as well. Highly recommend that. You know, those are um, those are cheap, 15 bucks or something. These, uh, I was going to mention too, these are 30 to uh, 40 dollars to 60 dollars, depending on where you buy them at. So, they're really nice. Um, and when I was talking about the the saws, I think at 271 back in Missouri was about seems like it was around four and a half and the 261 is probably six and a half it's a couple hundred dollars more money half again more so but i think it's worth it so i wish i would have bought that now the little saws those really get pricey i think that that little bitty one there was um uh, i believe around 450 for that one uh, the little one my brother's got, I think, is about 650. So, in other words, a little bitty saw costs just as much as a bigger one. So, these are what we cut wood with. Now, we have another big one if we have to use the chainsaw use as a chainsaw mill. Uh, we do have a, a woodland mills, but we can only do up to. Um, oh, let me think here a second. Um, I believe 16 feet is the longest log we can do on it. So we've had a couple of them that we needed needed some longer boards than that, and uh, so for that we had to use the um, the chainsaw mill, and for that it takes a lot of power on a chainsaw mill. Uh, Thirty cc definitely would not do it. Fifty cc you could probably get by with a fifty, you know, if you were doing small trees, um, especially in softer wood like the um, spruce and stuff that we have here probably get by with a 50 cc saw and that but I sure wouldn't recommend it if you were doing wide boards but the, um, the 660 magnum that we have um, now that thing will just wade right through about anything we have a 24 to 36 inch bar for it and um, cutting on a oh we had one here that was probably 12 or 14 inches in diameter and we were cutting um, 18 feet with it and and you had to refill it with gas after each cut. So that's how much gas that size of saw burns. Now that saw is a 90 cc saw. So that thing's a beast. I mean, it's a beast now. It's, it's heavy and it's a much larger chain and all that, but that thing will cut like a son of a gun. So we also have, um, uh, we have an older uh, 038 Magnum. You know, that's a 70, I believe a 72 cc saw and that thing's a real eater too so um but it's heavier 
it's heavier than these and these do everything we need to do so we we don't even use it out here it's just kind of a backup for us so um so that's kind of what we have on on saws um see if i had some other notes here i was going to mention again the um the lady that, that was requesting some of the information for her i'd probably strongly recommend looking at the um the little 180 so i think that would really really do what what she wants to do but um especially here in alaska so that's a that's an extremely popular off-grid saw i mean extremely popular but what i wouldn't do is i wouldn't buy a store brand saw anywhere so those kind of saws are really cheap saws you know they're made to use a couple of times and then people you know because you had a tree fall down in the storm then then people put them up and then the next time they get them out three years later they won't run and they're all mad so well it's probably a car breaker all gummed up on it and all that so um but i definitely wouldn't buy a store brand saw i would buy a steel or a husqvarna is what i would recommend either one of those you you wouldn't go wrong with so um but again like i mentioned if you know if you plan on trying to do any milling you know at least a 50 cc saw for that and um and I can promise you a 50cc won't be any too big for that. But, but when you when you bolt that bolt that piece on the bar and all that, you know, they get heavy. Even these 10 or 12 pound saws, when you bolt another five or six pounds on top of that, and then trying to hold it up and get it started, they're um, they're pretty awkward. So um, I'm not sure what else to really to really elaborate on the uh, on the saws. Again, you know, it, it's totally dependent on, on the individual and, you know, and everybody, everybody will have an opinion. So, you know, the, you know, the pros are going to tell you something totally different than a, than a homeowner would. And, um, and it seems like a lot of money to spend, but if you're going to go off grid and you're going to cut firewood, you want a saw that's going to work every time you go. And I personally would recommend having two saws. Um, I actually just sold one of mine the other day because we just got so many saws that didn't really need it. But I had a, had a 40 cc saw that I sold. And, um, and it was a great saw, but we just got so many saws that just, they just sit around and don't get used. So, um, but again, you know, if you're gonna be off grid and you're gonna be dependent on heat by wood only, then I would want a backup saw, you know, in case something happened because when it's in the, when it's in the wood cutting season and something happens to your saw and you can't figure it out and you have to take it somewhere to get it worked on, um, you know, depending on where you go, you know, you could be weeks, you know, getting the saw back. So, so I would, um, I would definitely recommend having a backup saw, even if you bought a, you know, a used saw, but, but the, um, some of the home line saws that still has, you know, is, you know, the 180, uh, the 250. The 250 is a super popular saw, and they have it in probably about a dozen different versions of the uh, 250. So the uh, price changes exponentially from their cheapest one to their most expensive one. Um, you know, probably the price probably uh, more than doubles, I would say. But again, you know, it, you know, you would want to, you would want to be able to crank one and start it, and um, and see if you can can hold one and use it all day. But um, but I would rather I would rather try to use a saw that's a little bit small, as I would buy a saw that's too big for me, because um, you know if the if the saw is let's say a 30 cc saw, you know I can cut everything with a 30 cc saw that these 50s will cut, but I just can't do it near as fast as they do, but it takes less physical strength to run that small saw too. And that's one of the reasons I run my little bitty one because this other one really, really wears me out. And like I say, I, I definitely don't use it limbing anymore. I use a little bitty saw for that um, just because it's, it's so much easier to use. So um, everybody kind of has to form their own opinion. You know, your opinions are gonna be all over the place uh, there's a still Facebook page you can get on and and um, and I just have to laugh all the time at the things I see on there you know that 
people want to do to their saws to to um, make more horsepower and all that you know i mean really it's just step up to the next size saw because when you start trying to hot rod these things you're just asking for trouble when you go out to cut wood you know the the uh, more you do to them the less dependable they're going to be so and i want mine to start every time i go out all of these saws we've used in 20 below zero weather and these saws all will start just as good at minus 20 as they do when it's 20 degrees so they all start good all the time it don't really seem to matter you know now when it gets hot you know then then you start having a few more troubles with them you know as they you know the heat pressurizes the gas tank and all that but cold weather is never an issue starting any of them but but again you know i'd stick with a steel or a husqvarna but not a store brand so um, you want something that you can get serviced because whenever it, you get out here and it hiccups and you got a store brand saw and the best explanation you can get is to buy another saw <clears throat> you're going to be out more money in the long run than you would be if you would have just bought a decent saw to begin with so when you get down to like the 180 steel um, i think you're looking at probably um i don't know probably two and a half probably for one of them little saws but and we have one of those too and it's they're really nice with that wrenchless chain adjustment you know these y'all have to have a chain loosen two bolts or two nuts and then use a screw and tighten the chain up a little bit and tighten it back up with a, a wrenchless chain adjuster you don't just get a little piece you flip out with your finger rotate it tighten the chain up flip the deal back and you're ready to go again so they're um they're really nice but but if you are going to buy a good saw and you want to spend the money um I definitely recommend looking at the pro saws and this this 261c um, that's probably one of the most popular steel saws that they make um, because it's used used for a little bit of everything and like I say it's um it's definitely a pro class saw which is even though they may look a lot alike the pro class saw is a totally different saw than the than the ranch saw so um anyway that's really all I can think of for now. Uh, if you have any questions, be sure and put it in the comments. I'll definitely get back to you. And um, pardon my pardon my mess here in the cabin, but I didn't want to do it outside. It was cold and, and uh, there's snow on the ground out there, so I figured it'd be easier if I just did it in here. So um, anyway, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you would. We appreciate all the everybody watching, and um, definitely appreciate all the comments. I definitely enjoy reading those starting to turn into spring here in alaska spring is here the uh, i noticed our foot our foot our snow level has dropped probably about a foot over the last two weeks um i mean it's really really starting to melt so it's um gonna be gonna be good so anyway thanks for watching like and subscribe if you would